Look at this battle pass stuff, man. I just... What has happened to the game I love? It's the death of me. Like, what? Gotcha. Well, we're waiting. They're showing no signs of having their stadium back in the game. They have still got that generic town park. Besides renaming the stadium to Kenilworth Road, which you can't even actually do because there's a character limit. Embarrassing. <laughs> don't give them ideas, man. No, 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 no. Don't, don't you dare. Oh my God, bro. Oh, hell no, oh. man. What the fuck, man? Five minutes. Could you not be yourself? For five minutes! Ah! Remember when you'd buy a game back in the day and it would actually work? No day one patches or updates needed. Just cast your mind back to those times. We are no longer in those times, people. FC24 is broken at launch and here is everything wrong with manager career, player career, and general gameplay issues that are plaguing the game that I could find within hours of playing. Just to showcase to you guys and document the unpolished lack of quality product EA have been releasing and the current state they've decided to kick off this brand new FC era in. New game, new name, same old franchise problems, baby. Look, FIFA 20's launch was bad. That was broken, but this is up there with one of the worst launches an EA FIFA game has ever had. I know for a fact that some of these issues can be easily patched in future updates, but this release now fix later mentality in modern gaming just grinds my gears thinking about it. And we're not dealing with an upcoming indie developer here. EA is a multi-billion dollar corporation that have been pumping these games out for years, so I'm not gonna hold back. Deep diving into the real issues as I've compiled everything that I could find and that's been sent to me, but as always, if I've missed anything, let me know down in the comments below. Let's kick off with the newly added features and everything wrong. <laughs> Manager career. Wake up. I said, wake the fuck up. Sleepy time's over, little motherfucker. Let's go. The new tactical view, one of the main headline features that EA were promoting. It's that first person view, the touchline, like you're there at game day. But however, it's actually probably the worst view you could ever have. As they've butchered this feature just for the touchline cam. Because basically, you're just watching your manager's back the entire time. You're not actually him. You can barely see what's going on. And it doesn't help when Pep Guardiola's just standing there menacingly blocking your view the entire time. There's no first person view for manager or player and you can't speed up the game like you could do in PES 2021. Back when that game had an actual career mode, Master League, you could speed up the game, you could fly through it, or you could take it tactically and slow, but there are just none of these options in FC24. The new coaching staff system has launched in a broken state because releasing coaches crashes your game. Not only that, it freezes you out of everything, so you can't back out, it's so Locks you, you can't select anything, and you're just forced to quit and start the game up again. So, we're already off to a great start here already. Like, did the dev team even bother testing this game? Like, where are the beta testers right now? No matter what console you're on, everyone is experiencing this issue and it's gone unaddressed by EA. Like, someone would have figured this out in the first five minutes of playing because the game prompts you to hire coaches as soon as you load up a new career. So, the fact that they didn't even catch this and haven't fixed it from the beta at launch just tells me everything you need to know. Now this is a mid-video intervention slash update here because to make matters worse, EA, without telling anyone, they have completely removed the release coach feature from the game. They haven't even bothered trying to fix it or letting people know when a fix is coming because you can't even, you can only hire people now. I can't get rid of William Butler even if I tried. Usually you'd have a command at the bottom asking if you wanted to release a coach, but now it's just no longer there and you're just stuck with whoever 
whoever you choose until your staff capacity increases at the end of the season. But this is just, I don't even know what is going on. I am starting to lose my mind. Like imagine if they did this with every other broken feature, just take it out entirely. We wouldn't even have a game left to play. More lack of care and the no attention to detail keeps on coming with these new features because with the new coach staff management and the training plans, random game code just appears on the menu and text overlaps everywhere. And it's pretty common too in the main menu and EA just saw this and thought that's a perfectly fine way to have the game look. Again, one minute of playing this game and they would have seen that issue in time to fix it for launch. Now with the new tactical visions, you only get seven to choose from, which I find baffling because there is no way there are only seven play styles of football in, around the world. That is just lazy. And then as soon as you start customizing your own tactical vision, you get an email saying it's a bad idea. You should change it back. Otherwise, the players will struggle in the short term and you need to rehire your entire coaching staff just to get the best out of them. And that's hard enough considering you can't fire anyone and you have a maximum staff capacity. So it's kind of just screwing you over. And don't even get me started about the email from your training plans as soon as you change one on a player or the entire team the assistant managers just tells you to stop changing them and like every time you try and tinker or experiment with something the game has something to say about it of course the tactical visions aren't dynamic and the cpu isn't smart enough to change them over time for example wolves in your save are going to be playing kick and rush until 2038 and there's nothing you can do about it it won't change they won't adjust their tactics no matter who they sign it's kick and rush to the moon, baby. There is no nuance to the CPU AI. We have the same old sign player cutscenes from FIFA 23 and EA couldn't even be bothered to add one new one. Like, come on, I have watched the same thing over and over again. Not to mention the new manager cutscene hasn't changed since FIFA 22. And somehow the transfer cutscenes are still bugged. Players are showing up in the wrong kits, holding up a Real Madrid kit, being presented in the OG frame free agents kit. It is just an absolute mess. And I understand maybe if they added a few more cutscenes or an entirely new one that there'd be these issues, but literally nothing has changed from FIFA 23. So how these visual glitches and errors have snuck their way through, it is literally a mystery. Oh, and your managers still glitch into a full kit wanker in the menus and there is nothing you can do to change their appearance. Why is this happening? Why is this a glitch? Another new feature, the pre-match report gives you no key players sometimes. It just doesn't bother working? What is the point of having the report if you're not going to tell me any key defensive or key attacking players? Even when you're coming up against big teams. Bernardo Silva is their only key attacking player. How is Haaland not a key attacking player? I don't know if it's kind of like, yeah, you already know that, so we don't really need to tell you. You kind of need to focus more on Bernardo Silva. Don't worry about him. You need to worry about a center midfielder, Bernardo Silva. That's their key attacking player, which he is a key attacking player. Oh, you're saying Haaland's not a key attacking player. Well, he scored six goals and one assist in eight appearances. Okay, Bernardo Silva has three assists. I guess he's instrumental in the attack, in the attack, you could say. He's a key playmaker or he's a key midfielder. The key attacker? I mean, Kevin De Bruyne on nine goal contributions. Jack Greeley, Sherling Arlen. None of them highlighted in the pre-match report. Ruben Diaz plays golf now. No, not a key defensive player. All right, then. No key defenders either. They're just all useless, apparently. There's nothing I should know about Sitalo, who's been wanted by all these European clubs. We've come up against Man City, Ajax, no key defenders whatsoever. But a one-star uh, Doncaster Rovers squad. Trust me, you gotta you gotta watch out for them. It doesn't tell you why they're a key player. Sometimes it has defending players as key attacking players. EA think we're living in 2012 and Ashley Young is an attacking winger because he's a key attacking player for Everton. I just want to let you guys know as well, just in case you come up against him, because a 40 year old Ashley Young is a key attacking player for Everton. They actually do have a key defender, which Man City didn't have. Apparently Ben Godfrey is better than Ruben Diaz. Beto, the new striker they bought on deadline day, no, I bet he scored no goal. Nah, no, no, no attacking threat whatsoever, Beto. Jack Harrison? No, no, he's no threat to an attack. Maybe he scored a boatload of goals. Who knows? Ashley Young. He's key in the attack, boys. And he, he's put zeros across the board. No, no goals, no assists. Key attacker, though. He's just that guy, apparently. It's 2012 all over again. And to think this feature was in FIFA 09 has been removed without anyone realizing. Everyone's forgot about it. And that game did it better. Like, it actually told you why they were a key player and the stats that they had to boast. I've got to tell you guys this stuff, man. I've got to put you on because no one else in the scene is calling this out. The big teams on a number of occasions still play reserve players, academy players against you even. Like sometimes 60, 50 rated players in the Premier League 
if you're a smaller team. And not only that, they can field players out of position. I've seen like Rodri at Cam, Tapsopper at centre mid, Man City having a boner for playing a no-faced O'Reilly at Cam. This is another minor bug that just seems to pop up every year. They say and claim that the AI have been improved, but time and time again, you start to see the weirdest things happen. Another small immersion killer is when you view the team stats from the pre-match report. There's a visual glitch where all the players are just playing for a different team. It's just an annoying visual glitch that someone hasn't been bothered to patch out. When you want to change a player's kit number, there's a random visual glitch with every other number that appears on screen. And the training development plans have been the same since FIFA 21 and you still can't train traits or new play styles to your players permanently. Just the same old plans that haven't been improved on or added are the same exact presets and position conversions. The only way to apply temporary play styles for one game only is by manually doing the training, which by the third or fourth drill becomes extremely repetitive and boring. Like why can't you just sim the training? And why can't you choose the player you want to assign a certain play style to? The, the game just sets you up with certain play styles you can apply to specific players and it's just very unstreamlined in my opinion. It could have been implemented a lot better. Play styles have apparently replaced traits, but depending on what menu you click on, sometimes they're play styles, sometimes they're traits. In the squad hub, they're traits. In the transfer hub, they're play styles. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm giving up. If a youth academy player you found has generated in with no play styles or traits whatsoever, yeah, you can't train any. You can only give them temporary ones if you get a perfect A rating. Anything under that and you've just wasted your time. EA are proving that they actually don't know how to update their game without removing things. With every new patch update or squad update, there are always player faces and manager faces getting removed and then re-added for no reason. Recently, it was Company and Rafa Benitez who were just removed. On launch, it was Ten Hag, even though he was in FIFA 23 and now he just hasn't been added back into FC 24. It's kind of like how Darwin Nunes had a face scan, had all of his tattoos in FIFA 23, but now in FC 24, it looks like he's fresh out of the tattoo removal salon. Talking about players, when they appear in the menus or in the new style cutscenes, I don't know, there's something about them this year. They just look bulky. Boulder shoulders, hunchbacks, you name it. Players are looking swole this year, depending on their body type. If they're stocky, if they're a little bit thick, they're going to appear like the Incredible Hulk in the menus and look like they're about to burst out of their jersey. Speaking of news graphics, they're still as glitched as ever. Like, transfer news style cutscenes are still bugging. Random highlights and key moments reported from the game. Players hunched over and looking down when they sign for a new club. Like, I can go on forever. And it's been like that ever since its addition in FIFA 18. Like, you're guaranteed to see something wild in the news articles, whether it's a GIF, whether it's text. The Frostbite engine just isn't built for this. Now, if you ask any career mode enthusiast right now what their main problem is, it's going to be the removal of the game day broadcast. By that, I mean the match build-up and the lineups being showcased before the game. That's been taken out as you load into a game with like 20 seconds or sometimes even less of pre-match cutscenes, depending on what the storyline is. And it just throws you straight into the kickoff. I mean, it's quick getting into a game. And this is on new gen consoles only. Apparently in old gen, it's still there. They've purposely taken it out of the game and I get it for like ultimate team and online modes but when it's career mode and you're deep into the immersion, when you want to soak up the game day atmosphere and see your team being announced, it's just a nice thing to have for realism's sake. This was an unnecessary removal and apparently it's been replaced by the new quote unquote unrivaled match day experience that EA kept banging on about in the marketing and hype of this game. But contrary to what EA believed, the match day experience is probably the worst it's ever been. At least like the Xbox 360 and PS2 had the lineups and players coming out of the tunnel and all the pre-game hype. It just completely ruins immersion. It's one of the main gripes people have and for good reason because even if you didn't want to see the lineups and the build up to the game, you could skip it by just pressing A. I don't get why they had to remove it. It's not a bug. This was intentional. That also means the Champions League anthem and the pre-game, you know, players standing in a line 
listening to the song, that's no longer in the game, whether it's the group stage or even the biggest of them all, the Champions League final. You just get those 20 seconds of pre-match cutscenes and then you're thrown straight into the deep end. Yeah, the song is playing in the background, but it's just not the same and EA need to bring this back ASAP. Talking about the Champions League or winning just any trophy in general, there has been no change to title winning celebrations on the pitch. Y'all know there's that end of season open top bus parade with all the silverware you've won, but there has been zero change since like FIFA 19 with the post game celebrations, whether you win the league, a cup or the coveted Champions League, the exact same animations play out and it's not even close. If you've seen the celebrations from FIFA 19, you've seen them in FC 24. It's the same type beat where the Super Bowl celebrations were the exact same in Madden, another EA franchise for like 10 years. I haven't touched on the lighting yet in this game, but it's just completely busted. When you're playing in the afternoon, the shadows, the light, it is just looks horrible sometimes. Even in the menu, before you're in a game, the lighting and like the smoke just decides to cut out of the background. Depending on what you do, depending on what menu you go into, it's just super distracting and weird to see like random flickers in the background. Honestly, playing this, it feels like your game is about to crash at any second. Another major tournament, the World Cup has been removed and for obvious reasons as it returns in an unlicensed state called the Men's International Cup. And better yet, EA can't even replicate the same 32 team World Cup format because there is only 30 national teams in the game. Yeah, that's right, 30. And a number so low that the FIFA 98 World Cup video game had a whopping five times more with over 172 playable nations. Gone of the days of having over 200 nations in a FIFA title. No more standalone World Cup games. Not even the mainline game in the franchise can save it because they have lost pretty much all the African teams. Australia's been removed. There's no Brazil. And you're lucky you can even do the Euros because they still haven't updated the tournament format in the Euros. The rules and format still go by the same 2012 four groups of four where the rules and number of teams have changed ever since Euro 2016. And when it comes to outdated stats and rules, EA haven't updated any of them. So in the Coppa Italia, for example, away goals have been removed. However, in FC 24 career mode, they still exist and player records like the golden boot record in the Prem is still 32. Even though Haaland last season, the cover star, the poster boy of this game broke it with 36. EA haven't been bothered to change it or update any of the new stats and records. So it's just a classic showcase of their lack of care and the attention to detail that is missing in this mode. Some teams third kits still haven't been added into the game and they just appear either not there or as a generic black and white jersey. But hey, thankfully the Nike slash EA collab kits were available on launch in Ultimate Team. When you select either a created or real manager in career mode, the same presets are there to select from that have been there since FIFA 22. And of course, when it comes to real managers, not all of them have game face scans, which is forgiving. However, leagues and other competitions like have missing managers. For example, League 1 only have the PSG manager. Germany only have Dortmund. However, in the third league, the third division of Germany, they've got every single manager. There are still no real championship managers in the game. There's not an unemployed manager section. So let's say Eric Ten Hag gets the sack later in the season. He's going to be removed from the game and you can't select him whatsoever. He's just not going to be there. The CPU managers in your save still don't get sacked or retire. So you'll make it to like 2035 and Roy Hodgson will still be in charge of Crystal Palace at age 88. There are also instances where managers decide to be a little too trendy transparent with their players and because they don't have the license to the league on and Bundesliga managers for some reason in ultimate team they have to find random stock photos to make their cards in game I'm not kidding we've got receipts we've caught them in 4k now when it comes to transfers in career mode this has been the most egregious scripted things I've ever seen in the game like there are always the same players that move to the same clubs for example Valde to Man City Chido Immobile to Real Madrid is a guarantee Taliska to Juventus I've seen many a times. Trent always leaves Liverpool in the first transfer window. Gavi always gets sold by Barcelona. Matoma always goes to Bayern. I don't think I've seen it this bad since the classic FIFA 13 Rooney to Barcelona or FIFA 16 David Alaba to Juventus. I'm serious. Start a new career save and you'll see 90% of these transfers actually happen in the first summer transfer window. No matter what team you are, no matter where you are, Chido Immobile will be bought by Blancos. Like, there's nothing you can do.
do. Oh, of course, the mob led. It, this might be the most scripted transfer I've ever seen. Like, it just always happens to me, no matter what. In contract negotiations, you can still only offer a max of five years and not six or seven like Chelsea have been doing in real life. Even though the rules have changed, you still can't put nine subs on the bench like in real life. You still can't see or have access to historical stats for your players from seasons gone by or player stats from other leagues. For example, you loan a player out to Serie A and you're wondering how he performed. The game only lets you see the stats from the competition your team played in and everything else just comes up as zero. Talking about player stats, that has been the same since FIFA 13. Presentation wise, everything else, it has not changed whatsoever. Talking about things that haven't changed, manager press conferences. That has been the same format since it was introduced in FIFA 20. Whether it's the pre-game or post, it's just a morale boosting activity that you must complete. Otherwise, you get in the sack and everyone's going to hate you or your players are going to submit a transfer request. Talking about sacking, in my personal playthroughs and just when I was testing out, experimenting in career mode, I was sacked weeks after winning the Champions League, both on separate occasions and the treble with Man City. I'm not joking. We won the Mickey Mouse treble with Man City, got sacked the next day and then in one of my rebuilds I won the Champions League with Chelsea off camera I simulated a couple of weeks and next season I was given the boot you could also still be sacked if you apply too low of a release clause to your players contracts even though their agent has no problem with you doing so when it comes to the menu overlays and the aesthetics the Premier League La Liga MLS Bundesliga and European competitions are the only menu lays and there is no Serie A one still after all these years and after EA and Serie A have partnered up. They've only been bothered to add the new broadcast package. Other than that, nothing takes effect in the menus. But what they have changed is the new La Liga background from that unique camo green feel to this red and black overlay, which looks exactly like the Bundesliga one. So La Liga has lost all that charm and vibe about it in the menus, and they both look pretty much identical to each other. Even though it was widely reported and rumored, this is one of the first FIFA games in a while that haven't featured a brand new league in the game. Not only that, they have less teams than last year. Now when it comes to the free agency, something that every other sports title seems to get right. NBA 2K, a fellow EA title, Madden, however in FIFA, it just gets neglected. This year there are a couple of high profile players in the free agency like David De Gea, Eden Hazard, but in terms of FIFA, they've just been completely removed. Now the free agency just consists of a random Mexican and Qatari national team players, plus fake players spawning into the free agency depending on what squad update you have. Every other sports title, if a high profile player doesn't have a team, they just get put into the free agency. But for some reason, EA decide to just remove them from the game entirely and you have to wait until they actually sign for someone in real life for them to be added back in. Kind of like what happened with Papu Gomez after he got released from Sevilla and now recently signed with Monza, he's been added. It's just basically the home for random regens and youth academy players to spawn and doesn't actually represent present the free agents currently in real life. It's just the players whose leagues have been removed and their national teams are still in the game. So EA have got to put them somewhere. I'm extremely angered to report that there have been no major changes to the youth academy. That's right, the game still generates bold 15 year olds, players that look like they're in their 50s, but they're actually 16. I'm just signing him because he's bold. Chi Hu An the bold 15 year old. And there are no new countries to scout in. EA would look like kind of treading on the right path when they added more in FIFA 22. And then for some reason they just stopped and couldn't be bothered adding any more countries. There are no youth teams. The player name pools are just so limited that, you know, if you scout in Ukraine, you get 15 Kovalenkos. And it's just so depressing that such a small feature, like actually selecting what position you want your scouts to bring back, gets celebrated like this. Would you look at that? You can now actually look for a specific position in Youth Academy. Oh, this is sick. Yes. The homegrown talent got removed and there is no under 17s team. There's no like second squad, kind of like how a Brentford have in real life, their B team. There is nothing you can actually do with them besides train them up with development plans and hope they become good enough for you to promote them. And once you delete them from your academy, they are gone forever and they cease to exist. Career mode, it's all about simulating and going into the future, seeing what it holds. However, a mechanic in the game that hasn't changed since like FIFA 12 
12 is that you can only go 15 seasons into the future. That's right, 2038 is where it all ends. The game forces you to retire like all the other years prior and just boots you out of the game. It gives you a quick career summary and then you're out of there. No special send-off, no animation or cutscene, no tribute to your manager and all you've achieved in 15 years. It is just copy and pasted from every single FIFA since FIFA 12 and it's quite sad. And this probably infuriates me the most because other games like NBA, you can go 80 years into the future. Madden, another EA title. And again, I have to bring that up because it goes 30 years into the future, doubles FIFA. And Football Manager, don't even get me started on that. You can go thousands of years into the future. There is no time limit on that game. Even with all these next-gen consoles and the new technology and hardware available, they haven't been able to crack the 15-year mark. The game gives up and it can't generate any new players or regens. It just, the game code decides to crash in on itself. Talking about EA updates, when they actually decide to add things into the game, like player faces, new kits, new stadiums, all the newly added content in patches don't apply to your old saves. And this has been the case ever since the dawn of time. You need to start a completely new career for you to see those changes and new things added into your game. Otherwise, if you go back into an old save, none of the new content is there, even though Konami figured that out on Pez Master League. Now, I don't know if this one makes me laugh or cry, but they've promised sponsored kit templates in Creator Club, which I wasn't getting excited for. I knew they were going to fumble the bag somehow, but it's legit just promoting the game and not actual real life sponsors. There's an FC24 sponsor, there's an EA sponsor, a Frostbite sponsor, like who would want these? Nevertheless, Creator Club continues to get depressing year on year as there are the same kit selections, the same crest selections, whilst Volta gets the opportunity and privilege to choose from hundreds of unique club badges. We've had to deal with the same for like three years now and you still can't play in real life stadiums like you can do in pro clubs. It's the same generic EA branded stadiums that you can just customize like the stand colors, the goal nets, the pitch, but you can't actually build anything and see the evolution of your stadium. You can only change it to whatever EA provides you. However, in pro clubs and in foot, they have such a different and more expansive stadium customization. There is no actual custom stadium builder. However, the system that pro clubs and ultimate team get is just levels above what you get given in creator club and career mode. You can upgrade your tiers, add TIFOs, add trophies that you win on the pitch. Like it is just a completely new level and career mode fans and players have been left in the dust. In pro clubs, you get a trophy cabinet of all the silverware you've won, but it's not in career mode. Like who thought of that idea and didn't think that could also apply to career mode? No hate to pro clubs whatsoever. I'm a pro clubs enjoyer myself, but they get fan numbers and a reputation level. And the higher your reputation level, the more you can unlock, the better you can upgrade your stadium and your players. It actually means something and has an impact upon your experience. It gives you something to grind towards. Why isn't this in career mode and a new feature? I have no idea, but watch them come out next year in FC 25. Add this stuff in from pro clubs and claim it as new features. Like, I, I will be there no matter what to dislike that YouTube video. Not only that though, the player customization in pro clubs is by far way superior to that of career mode because in pro clubs you get more accessories, you get more hair, you can access new cosmetics and you can unlock them in the Volta shop. Now, if you were to buy all the cosmetics in this shop, you'd be maybe set back just over a hundred bucks. However, the best part is it doesn't transfer to other game modes like player career or creator player. It's just Volta and Pro Clubs exclusive all for you to unlock it and buy it again in FC 25, 11 months from now, because you already know that it won't carry over because EA need to suck every last cent out of you. I kept scrolling through all these bundles they've got available. They've got clothes, they've got jackets, they've got helmets, headgear, sunglasses, a face mask, plus a helmet in this bundle that I have to spend $10, $20 on. I didn't realize how many like things they locked up behind a paywall. I thought it was only these three. And what is even worse than all these bundles, what they're also locking behind a paywall is the most useless item like in manager career, in player career. Socks. That's right, socks. Which you can't even see because your player is wearing shoes and or boots. Whether you're in Volta, manager career, player career, they're, they're not long socks. They're not the socks you play 
like football in a normal white pair of socks. You don't even know what socks people are wearing because you can't see them. And they're paying, what? How much is 50 FIFA points? I don't need to convert this shit. 50 cents for a pair of socks you can't even see. Like gray ankle socks. You definitely can't see that. Is anyone going to buy all these socks? Like, do you really have to make that much money where you're spending real world money on socks? Socks? So you're charging money for socks? A pink socks that you can't see? I get you can unlock it by actually playing the game. Like, usually you'd be able to unlock these things in the EA catalog, but they got rid of that in FIFA 21. But it wasn't locked behind a paywall. You actually had to earn the items you got unlocked. Charging for facial hair is another one where I'm just like, why? Do you really think there is that much bank to be made by selling facial hair, facial accessories? They're charging $1 a headband, boys. $1 for a virtual headband. You can't do face tags. Hats though, that's another thing. They've added tattoos, but you can't add face tats. You can have a do rag. Maybe that was in previous vaulters, but no one played it to know. Oh, at least they're not charging for bloody kits. That would have made me lose my mind. I would have flip my desk. Why can't we unlock retro kits anymore like we used to do back in the catalog days and you could actually use them in pretty much every game mode. It wouldn't be just Volta. You could use them in kickoff, career mode, all the retro jerseys you'd be able to unlock in the EA catalog. I don't know why this has to be mode exclusive. Despite this already being the most expensive FIFA game of all time, this month sneakily with the hope of nobody noticing, EA have removed all FIFA games from online stores. Whether you go on the PlayStation store, Xbox, hell even on PC see with the EA app, the only way you can play is if you have the physical disc or you've already downloaded the physical version on your console. Otherwise, they're just forcing you to play FC24, this utter broken mess. They're trying to erase history. They're trying to shove the past under a rug and I'm not having it. Believe it or not, that was only the first section of this video. Onwards and upwards to play a career. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Play a career is in kind of the same boat as manager. Like, it could be so much more, however, it gets neglected even more than manager career mode does. EA are leagues behind the rest. They're in a different stratosphere. Like, NBA's my player is just in a different stratosphere. When you compare these side by side, it is a night and day difference. Just like in manager mode, it's the same 15 season time limit. You get that old retirement email, and there is no special email or news article or cutscene for your farewell retirement game. Unlike in PES 2021 Become a Legend, where you get a send off game, there's a full cutscene, a tribute to your career. Like, they could have easily just stolen that of Pez and it would be better than what they already have. But no, that would be way too much effort. But hey, at least you can buy a speaker that you can't actually use with your wages. Here's just a random funny one I found. You can't do a real player career mode with this player Linger at Feyenoord. For some reason, he's just greyed out and you can't select him. Like, I, I, someone, please let me know down in the comments why this would be an issue, why this would be a thing. Is this EA just being incompetent or is this just a genuine glitch? In the pitch notes for player career, EA claimed you could become a free agent in player career mode, but you can't. You can only select a new club if you're eligible or you're forced to go out and loan to a random team. You can't actually just wait for offers to come your way, chill out, be a free agent for a while. It forces you to choose your next path. And the key to your next path in player career is your player agent, which is probably one of the most useless features ever. And even though they're useless, you can't even choose or pick or decide or, or have any say in the matter about who your agent is It's just whatever random photo pops up there. That's your manager for the rest of your life for the rest of your career There's no ifs or buts about it Another new feature that is completely broken and has had issues is the player agent demands Because you get some weird ones like score bicycle kicks, score top corner goals The player career objectives are just absolutely wild Like three bicycle kick goals in one season The best players in the world are like to score one throughout their entire career and they want you to score three bicycle kick goals in in a campaign to continue playing with Chelsea make it make sense just just make it make sense it's reported that top corner goals actually aren't even counting so you could score like a hundred goals for your club that season but if if two of them weren't in the top corner that's it you're not good enough to get your contract renewed you're booted out the club and forced to leave the new Ballon d'Or fully licensed cutscene is something new in the game and if your player gets nominated for 
for the Ballon d'Or but doesn't win, you don't get the full cutscene. You kind of find out in the news title articles. So there's no, it ruins the kind of suspense and like the event of it all. You'll know your player wins if you get that cutscene. I feel like for all it's worth, after they hyped it up for that long, they could have executed it a little bit better. And do you remember those five slot training drills that were introduced back in FIFA 16 that were removed in FIFA 21? Yeah, that's right. They're still here in play career mode almost 10 years later. And if you retire pretty quickly or just straight away, you get the option to sign for so many teams. It is just actually broken. Like, why would Burnley want a recently retired Jaden Sancho to be their manager? It's just something that doesn't make sense. I don't know why this happens, but it does. Now, on to gameplay. Say what you want about it. It feels slow. It feels too fast. The dribbling's broken. The game feels weird. Passes don't connect. I've just come to the conclusion that no matter what EA do to the gameplay, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. They can't make everyone happy. But what they can do, for one, is stop players turning invisible. What? He's going on! What went on there? What the bloody hell went on there? What the Jesus Christ went on there? You can't do that on a career mode! I'm fighting for my bloody life and the invisible man's playing for Bournemouth! This is not a drill! What, what is going on? Bro, give me a break. Like, EA, is there one day we can go without discovering a new glitch in this game? You know how many times I've had to update this video? I like dropping fun facts on you guys, and one of them is that Testagan's face in-game hasn't changed in 10 years. Yes, over two generations of consoles, a decade dating back to FIFA 14 on the Xbox 360. After he even revived his hairline a couple of years back, EA haven't rewarded him or rescanned him into the game. It's his FIFA 14 game face model in FC 24. I know Barcelona have like a partnership with Konami and Pez, but come on. It's clown show levels of behavior up there with Gareth Bale not being an icon in FC 24. However, he is in the golf game, PGA Tour 24. His head model fully scanned and actually in the game. And he is repping golf Wales Madrid in that order. It's not just players that are turning invisible, looking like they're on stage. Steroids. It's also the crowd that have been done dirty here because take a look at this. Why is the crowd doing its best KKK impression? Uh, oh my lord. Whoa. Oh no. No, 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 no. We've just seen a mannequin invasion at Old Trafford right before our eyes. Players also have their hair glitching out if they have like long type hair or the dynamic strand based hair. It just clips and causes the screen to malfunction, especially with the likes of Matoma, Grealish. Their hair spazzes out if you skip the game cutscenes too quickly or in the instant replays. It's just a mess. Players start twitching out and doing weird movements in game. You can see David Beckham with a bunda and a half. I don't know if that's sus to say, but like, why is Anthony tweaking? Why is Anthony tweaking? Anthony is tweaking. After EA made such a big fuss about AFC Richmond and Ted Lasso being added into FIFA 23 and marked it as like a brand new feature, only one year later, both the club and the manager have been removed from the game. They're no longer in FC 24. I don't know whether that's a thing they had an agreement with FIFA or there's something else to do, licenses involved. They stopped their partnership. You can't become Ted Lasso. You can't control AFC Richmond. It was only a FIFA 23 exclusive. Not only me but everyone else just finds goalkeepers being extremely inconsistent and stupid at times at the near post they make it extremely hard to keep a clean sheet or just they just parry the ball straight to the opposition completely miss it entirely they haven't been this broken since like fifa 15 i reckon like goalkeepers usually they're not the best but they are really bad this year they've ruined the practice arena this year with the free roam 1v1 like technically you can do it but every time you kick the ball at the goalkeeper the game just resets you back to the halfway line so it's not like a continuous flow of play. You can't activate a free kick or penalty using the d-pad when you're on the pitch and you can't select the player or goalkeeper you want to use in the practice arena. It's whoever you've chosen as your favorite club and they've added back like the real life stadiums you can train in and practice in but you can't even choose what real life stadium you want to go into. It's like a random mix up between the Etihad, Anfield and the Bernabeu. Basically they've added more random 
some useless things to it like you can practice with multiple players but like the core OG practice arena is a shell of itself. The game's been out for over three weeks now and at the time of recording we've only had two title updates so far and they've only addressed stability issues on PC and the second one addressed an ultimate team menu glitch. So if you're expecting any fixes for any of this stuff please lower your expectations for at least before Christmas like the bar is in hell. Apparently EA and the team are aware of a couple of these issues I've pointed out so far and are working on it and by the time you're seeing this they might be fixed already but you know this is how the game launched in the first opening weeks where it makes a lasting impression on people and even though the bugs and glitches aren't completely game breaking there's only a couple like the visual glitches and just the errors present in the game right now it's impossible to ignore and they just build up like the little things they, they compile and it just ruins the experience because you just start to come across them so often no matter how minor the game is just in a terrible state right now and needs some extreme polish if it wants to be anywhere near playable. Now we must remember this is practically the only realistic football simulation game on the market. Pez or eFootball as it's called now has turned into a glorified mobile game ultimate team ripoff with no career mode and no player career but still is somehow able to steal some of the best licenses away from EA. And Football Manager is ultra realistic however is missing the one thing that FIFA has and that's actual gameplay that the user can control. I've said it in a video before, but I'd just be recommending you to play Keep FIFA 23 if you're on PC, download all the mods, get all the licensed teams, new leagues back, new kits and players in the game, and just all the little things that make the FIFA experience so much more enjoyable. Until all these issues and bugs get resolved, I'd recommend just wait for a sale. Either Christmas or Black Friday's coming up, and maybe by then, FC24 will be at least playable, and 90% of these bugs will be eradicated. But don't hold your breath. And honestly, it pains me to make these kinds of videos. I just want to play it, enjoy my time, and make the best content possible on the game, and just have fun with it. But all these bugs, glitches, and issues are ruining the experience. Let me know when you guys think these will be fixed by, and if FC25 is going to be any better. Bruh, the current state of this game right now, I don't think I've ever seen it this damn bad. Keep getting away with it! Maybe apart from FIFA 19, where they literally added nothing to career mode, FC24 might be the worst possible way to start a brand new era of FIFA. And let me tell you why. Look guys, it speaks for itself when the game is already at half price. If you want to cash it on the discount, feel free. Is it worth it? Oh yeah, it's worth it. If you're strong enough. Today, let's take a deep dive into all the new minor bugs and issues that fly under the radar that have been discovered recently or have been implemented thanks to the new title updates and patches. They're little nitpicks overall, but still worth mentioning. Because at the end of the day, it ruins the overall experience of not only career mode, but the gameplay once you factor in and compile everything together. Consider this the deluxe edition, the part two, the aftermath of my mega everything broken with career mode video, all the glitches, issues, mistakes that have popped up post-launch, all thanks to EA's incompetency, dropping multiple updates and quote-unquote fixes, however unintentionally breaking other sections of the game, especially career mode. Now the first issue we have to address, all thanks to EA's doing, is the new Premier League scoreboard update. Now it seems like a decent addition at heart, it keeps up with the brand new what's going on in real life with the new Premier League branding. Granted, not everyone really loves it compared to the other score bugs, however, there's only one minor a problem. That's whenever you come up against a white team or just a team wearing white colors in general. Because yeah, take a look at the score. Can can you see anything going on at the moment? I know you're not usually going to play white team versus white team because you can't tell the difference who's who. But just to illustrate the issue here, like you can't tell what the numbers are because the numbers are white. The numbers, basically. What do they mean? I don't know anything about any numbers. So good luck to whoever's doing a Tottenham career mode out there. Because whatever's going on here is just a menace to everyone's eyes. You can see there when the pop-up starts the kick off, the numbers are dark. You can tell what the score is. But when it comes to the score bug in game, nah, different story. And whilst we're on the topic of in-game graphics and cutscenes, we had this come out maybe like a couple of weeks ago, maybe even a month ago, of EA confirming that they purposely dropped and just completely removed 
the pre-match animation lineups and replace them all with like 10 to 15 second cutscenes so you can never see the players walk out of the tunnel or the lineups go down. It was probably one of the most missed features in the game and what fans have been yearning to come back. It was one of the many main complaints that FC24 career mode has had to face and this is just one of the community managers coming out and saying that they noticed that people used to skip the intros so they just completely removed them all together instead of just adding a skip button and letting people decide if they want to watch the cutscenes or if they just want to skip straight into the game clearly stating that in FC24 we shortened the intro scenes and presented that important information and context up front and apparently their goal was to provide players with a smoother and more streamlined entry into the action by creating a shorter and more engaging experience if only that made any sense because by not showing the lineups and the players coming out of the tunnel that disengages the player and takes away the world building whilst you're at it because it removes that feeling of like you're watching an actual game on TV. Whilst many players have welcomed this change, who has welcomed this change? What positive feedback has anyone had about this? This company, bro. Yeah, it's not coming back. Not in FC24. It's not going to be an update. And you guys down in the comments when I posted this were, were fully on board. Yeah, they're probably just going to remove it and then market it as a brand new feature for FC25. Now, I know I get it in the online game modes but in career mode like come on i'm not gonna let you massacre my boy like this ea no company are more out of touch with their community than ea sports fucking preach that brother now during title update 4 i believe if you were to go through and load up the ballon d'or ceremony in career mode things weren't really panning out as they should instead of it loading up and seeing who wins the trophy instead you were greeted with whatever this monstrosity was bro even my boy edgar was experiencing the same pain like what is going on here? For some reason, the Ballon d'Or ceremony arena has like half been loaded. The floor is entirely white. For some reason, there's a lineup of random Barcelona players. Verts is standing there on his own with a generic kit. That kind of looks like Carlo Ancelotti in another universe. This is nightmare fuel, people, and how it creeped its way into an update, no one will know. Luckily, the Ballon d'Or ceremony was the only victim, and nothing else received this. Oh, God. Told Pep Guardiola's back. As I was saying, nothing Nothing else really experienced that treatment. Now, just another incredibly weird random detail that has caught unnoticed is Deli Alley, and more specifically, Deli Alley's face scan. It can probably go down as the first player to change hair, depending on where you see him in the game. Okay, great angle. Great angle, guys. I love that in your pre-match cutscenes. What was that? Here, in-game, he's got his, like, luscious dreads. They're, they're looking beautiful. They're bouncing around everywhere. And then once you go into the cutscene, it all disappears. And it goes back to just his normal hair, I guess. Even in the replays, when they show him back the goal, he's got his normal hair locked and loaded. And then once you pass the cutscene and replays, he goes back to his dreads. Look, I feel like I'm in too deep at this point, but I just want to show it off because it's just so weird like why this stuff is happening yeah cutscenes replays it's that classic deli alley look and then once you get back into the game the dreads are locked and loaded don't you just love the random code and text that appears on the screen for a split second when you pause the game it's that blink and you miss it stuff that i can really pinpoint and it's just so jarring to the experience man every little new style cutscene you know has had a glitch over the years and this is no exception as it hasn't actually happened to me personally but i've seen a bunch of stuff on reddit and YouTube and that is random Christmas lights appearing out of nowhere like EA just got into the festive season a little bit too early they're in the mood another one of these unexplainable ones don't know how this slipped through the code now some more weird in-game glitches that happens they're similar on par to that Deli Alley case is that the cameraman just turn into rainbows for some reason the photographers all the media guys they just do their best clown impersonation I swear this rainbow suit and glitch was in the game from like FIFA 19 or FIFA 20 it's it's just only a matter of time until it gets activated in the game. That's how old this game code is. Forget FC, it's still FIFA down to its very core. We've also got some other in-menu stuff, like those animations that happen when you pause the game. Yeah, they just continue on in the background for some reason when you're back in the menu. So you've got the two commentators up on the stadium. Now, another in-game menu error was sometimes people experience when you went in to select a real-life manager, they would just disappear on the right of the screen. They just turned into a shadow. Banish 
push to the shadow realm and something that I really don't understand about editing your manager. Look at Allegri. I want to go ahead and change his outfit. I want to change the color of his tire. Let's go ahead and... Oh, uh, it's disappeared. I don't know where it is. For some reason, his tire has gone missing. Speaking of Allegri, we've had the man appear somehow on the main starting menu of FIFA where the players are supposed to be. He's just in his manager outfit, bawling out at the Santiago Bernabeu. Again, another example, like, what is going on in this game? Look at him, bro. Doing roulettes, rainbow flicks. Not gonna lie, everyone that's ever worn those dress shoes knows that they give you 99 shot power and curve. And speaking of managers that probably shouldn't really be in a job, but they are. We have all the unavailable managers or all the unemployed managers that realistically should be in the game. They just get removed by EA. We've got the likes of Antonio Conte, Graham Potter, Zidane. Like, why can't there be an unemployed or like recently fired manager section that we can still go ahead and use instead of them being completely removed from the game and just banished into the wilderness until they get rehired. This is what I mean when I say we should have an unemployed or managers like miscellaneous section because look at this list of managers in FC24 who have a scanned game face but haven't been added by EA. Jose Mourinho, Roma aren't licensed but you've got a bunch of Bundesliga managers, a couple of league gun managers, some legends out of Middlesbrough, Wayne Rooney, Carrick, Patrick Vieira at Strasbourg, Gattuso, Inzaghi, Joey Barton, George Hagi, like a lot of these are ex-players, ex-greats of the game. A couple of ex-Premier League managers in the championship, like Daniel Farker and David Wagner, Gattuso at Marseille. There are so many managers missing from the game, it like hurts my soul. Apparently Sam Kerr wants to be a goalkeeper now. Who is this Sam Kerr lookalike imposter? She hasn't even got a hair. She hasn't even got a ponytail. It's a bold Sam Kerr. She just had to shave her head. But this is just cursed. She's actually a goalkeeper. Sam Kerr from an alternate dimension. Now speaking of the main menu, I, I recently logged in like online connected to the servers because usually I'll just stay offline because I've got a bunch of mods and stuff running in the background. However, for some reason, no matter what mode I went on to, player career, clubs, manager career, all this ultimate team promo would just pop up instead. Trying to select manager career and the first thing that comes up is just a foot promo shoved right in your face. Like, come on, buy the packs, buy FIFA points, go on ultimate team. This was probably like one of the most egregious things I've seen. I know it usually pops up when you log in, but once you go on to the other game mode, like player career, manager career, it shouldn't be popping up in that section. It just felt so overpowering and like so forced by EA, man. This is their main priority, not career mode, guys. It's this. It's a Black Friday Thunderstruck icon sale. Oh, and don't worry, guys. We are just getting started here. I'm starting to rev up here because I nearly wanted to end it all when I saw this. During a recent title update, career mode will just crash when you started a new game. You wanted to start a fresh new save, the game would just collapse in on itself, especially on consoles. I think it was specific to PS5. The game would just crash and there was nothing you can do about it. And it also like reoccurred even if you went into uh, an old save to progress into a new season, you just couldn't. It would crash straight away. How this issue, like a major, major issue like this slipped through the cracks, we will never know because apparently it was a crash that was exclusive to people that weren't English. So like if you had it in any other language, you'd lose all your progress and most likely you would have corrupted your save file in the process. Like imagine this happened into our ultimate team, like where people couldn't log in or people couldn't connect to the servers or people, as soon as they went into ultimate team, it just crashed the game. Like that would have been fixed in minutes. It would have been fixed like that. This is going to be the most egregious glitch or like bug crash to ruin the game mode ever. Like literally stopping you from playing the game entirely. What levels are this company going to stoop to next? Because I don't want to find out. Yeah. For real, I, I feel your pain, lad. This photo is literally the entire community right now. You guys weren't too happy either when I broke the news and posted it because, yeah, the comments came flooding in and the cracks were really starting to show. This FC new era was not off to the best of starts. At this point, it's better to play FIFA 23 with mods than EAFC 24. That is the state of career mode right now in a nutshell. However, there has been a glimmer of hope recently. There's been an announcement with Beats and FC 24 where there's little collaboration going on and possibly for the first time in career mode history there is post launch content added to the game i know we're living in a historical moment right now because potentially thanks to this promo we're going to be seeing a couple of things added to either play career mode and the creator club side of manager mode but with this trailer like with all these cutscenes, like they they don't happen in the game actually they're just all this one ad we don't get these locker room cutscenes. we don't get the fans all lining up outside it is all just cosmetic or just 
like uh, the aesthetic of this commercial. The new ad was built using EA's Frostbite game engine, not actual in-game footage. Like those scenes on the bus, getting out of the bus, were only made for this ad and not put into the actual game. Like none of this happens in career mode. Like after all those dynamic moments and cutscenes, this ad for some reason had more importance than the actual game experience. But wait, there's more. You could become a Beats ambassador in player career mode. Does a cutscene happen? Does it affect your player or gameplay whatsoever? No, it's just you click a button, you become a Beats ambassador and that's it. A little pop up on the screen, you get your attribute boosts and nothing happens. It'll add the ability for users to purchase additional virtual Beats headphones from their in-game salaries and earn personality points that enhance their on-field performance. So you're going to be able to like customize your player, put some Beats headphones on him, which, you know, spoiler alert, sorry to spoil the parade, but I already did that back in FIFA 23. And other benefits, whilst manager career mode, uh, now I'm listening, will allow users to outfit their teams with beat inspired kits. So maybe we might see some sponsors get added into FC 24 for creator club. And it looks like you're going to have to be pretty deep into your player career save to even do this because the player in this example is like 92 overall. And hopefully you can add beats headphones to your manager. That would be a sick look, but it might only be an exclusive for player career mode and Volta. Now, a couple of outside factors that haven't really been EA's fault have gone down in real life. And that has caused a knock-on effect for the game because thanks to that great Italian betting scandal that went down with Fagioli, Sandro Tonali, and whoever else decides to gamble their winnings in future, once they receive those bans from the club or FIFA, they get completely removed from the game. You can't access them, you can't play with them, unless you have an old save file or you load up the old squads from launch, you can't use them. And I know this is just a strange request, but like, yeah, just don't remove players when they get suspended because prime example, who remembers this back in the day? FIFA 15 career mode, Luis Suarez wasn't removed. Back when he decided to take a chomp out of Chiellini at the World Cup, I think he got like a five month suspension, I'm not quite sure. As soon as you started up a Barca save in FIFA 15, you got this email straight up the jump. Please be aware that Luis Suarez is currently serving a suspension and will not be available for selection until the 26th of October 2014. He wasn't completely removed removed like for some reason he got a special exception why can't we just keep this system that we had going what seven years ago nine years ago oh my god i feel old 2014 was nine years ago almost 10 god damn now as i predicted ea are dropping euro 2024 germany dlc and if you're an avid viewer of the channel you would have already known that little tidbit i gave off a couple of videos ago you put two and two together ea have got the euro license back and they're gonna do pretty much what they did for the 2020 2 World Cup and it's just going to be a little added tournament mode for Euro 2024 and you just know they're going to have a bunch of content and promos in Ultimate Team and it will be a free in-game update next summer. Don't worry, you don't have to pay for anything and based on the content that they're going to add, it's probably not even going to be worth five bucks if you ask me. Based on that Qatar World Cup DLC, that was just oh. The Women's World Cup was surprisingly a little bit better because you could have Captain Your Country, an OG game mode from back in the day from when there was those World Cup like, actual standalone games. That was in the Women's World Cup DLC, but not the men's for some reason. It's going to be like early June sometime. So yeah, we are going to have to wait for a while. I'm going to have to wait a while, not only for the update, but a couple of custom real faces. Maybe we'll see some brand new face scans, some new stadiums added, and general cosmetic enhancements, like what you come to expect. However, one thing they didn't want you to notice or mention is the fact that they have lost the French national team rights. That is a completely generic France kit, thanks to the strategic placement of Verts' arm. You can't see the generic logo. 2022 world champions will be unlicensed in the game from 2024. Like I said, it's probably just going to be a crappy little tournament mode that you can play against your friends. You can do a kickoff. You can play against people online. But let's be honest. Let's be real. It's EA. Like They're not going to go above and beyond for this. They just want to show off that they have the license. And whatever they add into the game, a mod I could easily replicate like they've done in the past. There will be no changes in manager career mode whatsoever. It'll still be called the Euro Cup or the European Championship with all its generic licensing, that crappy logo and this four group system, like nothing will change here. It's only for that newly added mode where you're going to see all the Euro 2024 branding and licensing. This is still going to be an absolute farce and replicate the Euro 2012 format, something that changed over 10 years ago and they're not going to touch this. Trust me, I know, I don't want to get your hopes up. Like if you were to compare it to the Euro 2012 DLC given, it was paid but only, a, I think it was maybe five quid 10 quid it's not gonna have your expedition mode it's not gonna have your 
scenario slash challenge mode. It's going to be extremely bare bones. No new extra gameplay features or anything quite spectacular like this really, really unique practice arena that I wish came back. Yeah, it's going to have the broadcasting rights and packages and all the branding on the sidelines. Trust me, I know EA too well. They proved it in 2018 with the World Cup. The 2022 World Cup was just the epitome of lazy. And this DLC allegedly is releasing in early June. And then when you compare that to Euro 2012 that was literally released nearly two months before the actual tournament. It doesn't really fill me with confidence too much because the Euro 2012 DLC, yes it was paid, but it was probably actually worth it considering the amount of modes you got. Expedition mode which we haven't seen return to a FIFA game ever since. Basically it was just a fun little offline mode that you can go around, beat other people's teams and receive a player in return if you do so to build your own team. And basically you'd travel the entirety of Europe until you built up a super squad. It was just something fun, something different that you don't really see too much nowadays. Yeah, the real life trophy is going to be added into the game, fully licensed for the first time since 2012, but only available in that little add-on mode. It won't be in career mode, I can assure you that. The only thing I'm looking forward to at this rate is actually going to the games in Germany, which I somehow secured tickets, and Italy defending their crown, baby. It was just my luck that as soon as I got done recording yesterday, EA put out a new tweet for the announcement of title update 6. The FC24 holiday update. Let's take a look and see where they went wrong. They've got some gameplay changes, 100 updated face scans, and wh why is one new celebration listed as something added? In the official pitch notes, it looks like we're going to see some snow, some Christmas themes in the main menu. I guess they were cooking something with that Christmas light glitch a couple weeks back, but basically, it's just a bunch of gameplay and ultimate team changes, so nothing specific to career mode. We officially have some more star heads and brings 102 updated player star heads, as well as six new managers. You can expect to see improved likeness for players like Gregor Kobel, as well as managers like Luis Enrique, and the two examples they've given us here is Gregor Kobel in action for Dortmund, and then Enrique, who, I'm not gonna lie, the manager scan here actually looks pretty decent. That looks like some GTA 6 level graphics. I'm not usually one to glaze EA, you guys all know that, but the, I don't know, Enrique kind of looks good here. What did he say? A little bit of the snow theme, but what, why isn't the snow like landing on the grass? It's literally just in the air and then it disappears. Like there's no snow on the ground like you'd see in a snow day in game. You've got a refreshed new main menu, which we're probably going to see more glitches in. And then a few new ultimate team stuff and a bunch of gameplay things that I can't be bothered reading through. No definite career mode fixes because according to EA, FC24 career mode is perfect. Look, let's be honest. I wasn't really expecting any major career mode changes to come in this update but it would have been nice. It's mainly to do with updating the cosmetics and the aesthetic side of the game. No new mention of stadiums. However, in addition, there is a mention of a brand new team added into the game in the rest of the world category. And I assume it's only going to be in kickoff and tournament mode. E Euros 11. No idea who they are. No idea what players are going to be in this team, but they're five-star rating. 85 attacker, 84 defense, 84 midfield. You never know. It could be a mix of current and past present players like the old classic 11s. A soccer aid-esque team team that combines generations so keep your eyes out for that but you won't be able to use them in career mode of course like you can tell something's up and seriously wrong when you've got every single creator ranting about the current state of the game even the ultimate team players are unhappy and they get all the love they get all the attention the promos the updates all the newly added content post launch trust me guys it's an absolute farce and mods can't come quick enough now i was gonna just specifically say for the career mode side of things but just game Gameplay also in general, this has been the buggiest launch and just post update treatment since FIFA 20 and that broke gaming news headlines, that was mainstream news, you had players, NBA players, celebrities complaining about the state of career mode and we just had a similar if not worse launch and post launch care and just look at these stats, look at the numbers that this game is still doing. Despite it still not being called FIFA anymore, the sales revenue is up, platform earnings is just absolutely making a killing right now. FC24 with over 14.5 million active accounts exceeding what EA already had predicted. Look, it helps when the game massively goes on sales, there are big discounts, but it just shows to EA that they can get away with this. They, they can do literally whatever they want, serve it up on a plate, rebrand it as FC25, and they'll still make their profits. People will still play this game. People will still accept it. Like, no matter how much kicking, screaming, and shouting we do, EA will make their money, and that's all they want. At the end of the day, they don't really care about 
how there's a ginormous career mode mega thread about how many issues there are, how many features need to be added, things that need to be fixed, or the career mode experience in general, because there is no way they can monetize career mode, or there is no way they've thought to monetize this game. So they just leave it as it is, just kind of update it sporadically every year, and see who bites, which is a lot of people. Just to put it into perspective for you guys, there are five FIFA 11 career mode features that have been removed or are just not even present in FC24. You've got the big ones, you've got the obvious ones like sponsors, live cup draw, which honestly I never even experienced growing up playing all the old games because I believe this was exclusively on the PSP. Yeah, you had the live cup draw for like the FA Cup, the Carabao, you could set your ticket prices, which I love doing. You could have a trophy room, which I've been suggesting for ages. And hey, there's that Champions Cup that lasted all the way until FIFA 19 here back in FIFA 11. There's a trophy room and cabinet in pro clubs, but not career mode, which I pointed out before. And there's a fame status for your manager. So not only that vapid manager rating you get from the board, but you actually have like a status you could work towards and build up to over the years. The best part of that feature was it actually impacted the gameplay. Not only a risk of you getting hired or sacked, it could help you in transfer negotiations and increase your transfer budget. Now, I don't know about you guys, but FIFA 11 is still my goat. And to think all the creators and all the people that got their hands on this game and had early access a couple days before everyone else was hyping up this game, just loving life when EA gave them free codes, but as soon as the game came out, the real beta testers and people that dove deep realized, yeah, this is just the same old, same old, and this FC24 new branding isn't going to save them. Just at the end of the day, to protect you from pre-ordering or wasting your money on the game, just don't trust anyone or anything anyone says. If they get the game early, they get early access, if they go to all the capture events, if they get the game or care packages for free, they're yapping. They're basically yapping about the game because they still want a relationship with EA, they want to get early access. Access. I want to be all buddy buddy with EA and go to all the launch events But they really don't actually care about the game in depth And that's where people like me come in where we don't really care about what EA thinks of us And we just say it how it is we see an issue in the game We report it we, we let the people know and really press EA We want them to fix this stuff We want to see new features and new content in the offline modes and not just crappy little cutscenes We need to see actual features with substance new innovation every single year not just removing features and then bringing them back years later. Now I know I'm just gonna receive a bunch of comments below saying, why don't you just stop playing the game? You don't have to buy the game. Stop playing it, play FM. I know I'm never gonna escape those allegations, but hear me out. At the end of the day, like many others, I actually genuinely enjoy the career mode game mode as a concept. Simulating with real life teams, using real players, transferring, having your own little world you can control and manage, being able to control the team and actually play with them in game. It's a unique selling point and career mode has been a staple of this franchise for years, if not decades. But it's gonna take eFootball Pez levels of massacring for me to not buy a FIFA every year and play career mode. It also doesn't help that EA don't have any competition right now. There is no Pez Master League that's up to date and released to the public yet. Like eFootball Pez just completely removed that. And now all we have, if we wanna manage our teams and actually play with them in game, I know there is Football Manager, but the only competition EA had Master League completely vanished from the earth. RIP Pez will never forget the aftermath of FC24 career mode, all the bugs, glitches, and issues I could find. Let me know down in the comments below if I've missed on anything, and if I should make another video. Part 3 would be insane. <laughs> Alright, I promise this is my last RAM video on FC24 because there is no way EA can ruin this game more than they already have. I may not have a brain, gentlemen. But I have an idea. Brother, uh, what's that? What's that, brother? Over the course of the new year and the January transfer market, they've been dropping little title updates here and there on a game that was already 70% off only a couple months after release. So that was a f***ing lie. Of course they just had to throw that cheeky little FIFA points bonus in there anyway. And the Euros DLC is probably going to be even more minimal and bare bones just like World Ooh. Cup 2022 was, but we'll get to that later. EA, you're not getting off lightly here. This right here is how the game not only has me feeling, but the entire community. Not only just career mode, ultimate team, but pretty much everyone. EA's disaster class has been felt by every single community. So this is a compilation of new bugs and glitches that I've found personally while I've been recording 
recording videos, some that you guys have sent, and also things that I've found on Reddit and Twitter. I've played over 200 hours of this game. I think I know what I'm talking about. First on the plate is probably one of the most common visual glitches you'll see. It's the new style cutscenes that have just been broken since FIFA 18. And in FC24, they just take the cake because look at this monstrosity. You got a guy whose body is just all contorted, distorted. His shoulders are invisible. His head's coming out of his body. Like, it is just some R-rated stuff right here. I don't understand how this game is like a Peggy 3. Because it is a genuine horror show at times. Like, like what is going... Bellingham back there, half of his body is dropped off the face of the earth. And Mbappe is doing his celebration. <laughs> He's crossing his arms and he's shut like you literally have to see it to believe it. This, this is real I swear there's never ever been a, an issue like this before when it was first introduced only in like the last couple of FIFA's This has been a real problem. I'll bet the house that this doesn't get fixed before FC 25 Yeah, here we have even more visual glitches that people find in games something that I talked about last video The scoreboard just being absolutely unreadable there if you're a white or a team wearing white <laughs> Manager's hair just either disappearing or completely just distorting again. EA love distorting bodies and distorting hair. Roy Hodgson's still kicking on in 2037 according to this post. Yeah, in-game he, he doesn't look quite right. This is actually a recent phenomena that I've seen pop up and we all know that EA split from FIFA. They can't have the FIFA branding in-game or in any of their titles. However, this is where their lack of attention to detail comes through because of course EA, they haven't cleared some small minor details and assets in game and first up we're gonna start with the captain's armband when you're playing in either World Cup games or international games and kickoff there is still the FIFA branding and the FIFA logo on that captain's armband Harry Kane with England the captain and it's got FIFA written right there they're caught in 4k caught red-handed and someone's called them out recently their ball still has the FIFA branding the FIFA license logo now I don't know if this is intentional I don't know if they're allowed to do it I don't know if they can get in trouble from this but it's quite funny to see that because every year we, we say there's a lack of attention to detail and now it is there in plain sight it's clear as day now here's something that i want to touch on just so many visual glitches and errors that are still in career mode haven't been addressed for months and probably won't be fixed i'm gonna say probably until the later stages of career mode maybe not even ever touched we have the curse of the free agent placeholder kit it's in all the cutscenes. it's in just random times during when you load up into a game or when you sign a player contract renewals it's in the in the restaurant in the cutscenes. It's just everywhere. You can't escape it. All right, let's take a look at our Champions League draw. Oh no, <laughs> my game is broken. This save is just corrupt. What is life right now? I'm up. I'm, how do they get away with this? They they can't keep getting away with this. But they just it just it's inevitable. Huh? Everywhere you look, you just can't escape it. Everywhere you look. I bet every single career mode player has experienced some kind of glitch like this. Whether you've played for five minutes or five hours. Need I say more? N need I say more? No words. No words can describe this dumpster fire right now. It is what it is. I feel like we're playing FIFA 19 all over again. I can't take this game seriously, bro. I, I don't know how people take this game seriously. When it's up against Pez, eFootball, whatever, free-to-play nonsense, this... this this is what this is the best they can come up with even the waitresses even the people in the background even they're wearing the free agents kit carrying the food bro full kit wankers they'll never leave the full kit wanker brigade is back in force this game is making me want to end it all like what is this frame right here ea have done their worst and uh we are left with an absolute abomination like what is this man like how do they get away with this every single update every every time they try and patch this game some new issues and bugs always come I'm creeping back in you can guarantee that and these transfer cutscenes have been broken from the jump it's just unbelievable i don't even think i'm surprised at this rate anymore they, they do this every year. year it was there at launch they patched it out and then a couple of new updates added it back in again and it is just a terrible experience we also still have the headless or the bodiless managers in the negotiation cutscenes. vincent company just a floating head it's like something out of harry potter and again you have to see it to believe it and yeah of course you need to reassess your life choices mate because that drip is terrible and not only vincent company but other managers like mc Moyes right here this was some of my own footage and i just had to document it because a headless david Moyes is something that i wanted to curse you guys with i had to see it now you have to as well it doesn't get any better the the viewing is very very eerily odd and i might have just found my halloween costume for next year we've also had the cameraman holding nothing 
Yeah, but yeah. What, what are you showing Alex Scott there, mate? Uh, the invisible box? What, what are you guys holding? What, what is he? Why is the hands going through the camera? He's trying to hit her with that camera, Riz, but but the, he, he fails to realize that he's no, there's nothing there. I don't know what Alex Scott is looking at either. Just just bizarre scenes going on. But you officer got the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Oh, no, hold on. His camera is coming out of his... Pass. Children play this game. He needs to get it checked out. That's all I'm gonna say. Someone get him a doctor. A and that guy down there as well. He's holding something and it's coming out of the downstairs department. This guy's got it coming out of his chest. The Iron Man of cameras. And these are just some of the horror shows you could you could witness in this game. And no, uh, it's not just at the Fiorentina Stadium. It it's everywhere. The, the cameramen are just clueless holding nothing with the camera coming out of their rear end. Whilst we're on the subject of cameramen, yeah, at uh, Fiorentina just have an obsession with wiling out on cameramen because th this guy he's a rainbow and we all know we've seen the rainbow glitch in previous fifas and they're back at it again not even holding the camera levitating camera coming out of his face don't let this guy in saudi arabia they'll kick him out it's nightmare fuel there's there's nothing more i can say and uh just when you thought it couldn't get any worse we also had the sheffield united manager the chris wilder glitch come through where his face face scan got updated or i don't know something to do with the squad update and it just turned to a gray placeholder random some image on top of his head but it was also combined with his face scan it was very weird it's kind of like the david moyes thing i didn't want to see it again but i recorded it for evidence purposes like his head got half his scalp missing he's got placeholder tattooed on his forehead ea just did him dirty but it, it was kind of cool for the moment i still don't know if this works now because they eventually fixed it it took them a damn while but one of the strangest and probably the most random glitches you'll ever see because why was it chris wilder why was he the chosen one who had the gray face skin we will never know but it will go down in history as one of the best career mode glitches we'll ever see like you get to see it up close and personal there and it is just a thing of beauty i even tried it in game like i wanted to see it up close on the sidelines it is still the case you can see it even better because it's on the back you can see the back of his head so it wasn't just only in the menus now the youth academy is something ea have gotten wrong so many times so many years in a row and haven't really updated it since like fifa 21 it's probably one of the most beloved features in career mode and people just receive glitch players like someone that is zero foot tall he's left footed he has minus five to minus six potential he's minus six overall 2024 years old but the number cuts off right there Ika Aguirre he, he's technically gifted though so I'll give him that he comes from the country known as not found I love that nation I've always always wanted to visit a very creative flag too might I add and we also had someone who found Javier Torres who is actually aged 2025 so one year older and a minus six to minus six potential I see the vision Javier Torres, sign him up to the Youth Academy because you've got a gem on your hands. Now, I know I pointed this out in one of my first few videos of the year, but like, what, why do 15 year olds and 16 year olds have fully grown beards? Like, I, I can barely grow a beard myself. And we have teenagers out here repping fully grown beards. And also bold. The bold 15 year olds and 16 year olds are the ones that get me. Another area of the Youth Academy that needs to be fixed, just the visuals. Like, we need brand new player faces, brand new names. Of course, there's mods for that, but new base game players players just suffer so hard with the with the youth academy especially so this glitch from the last video still continues with random managers popping up in the in the main menu first it was allegri now it's javi just balling out on the pitch with full dress shoes on the manager retire again i don't know what caused this this doesn't happen to me i've just seen it online so many times it gets funnier every time but it actually makes sense with javi because he was a former player or like a recent former player what is this game bro what is this game, bro? What the f*** is going on? What am I looking at? You can't make it up, bro. You cannot make this shit up. I, can I? I can't even do anything. My save is just broken. Uh my save is just completely gone. Someone sent me this glitch before. I didn't think it was real, but it is. I'm seeing it first hand right here. Bro, they better be working overtime for FC25 because this game has been nothing short of a fucking disaster. How many times do I have to make a video saying this game is broken? I'm trying to record a fucking video and this shit happens. Every, uh, I swear, every video I've made this year without fail, I've encountered a glitch of some sort. Like, fucking make me a beta tester of this shit because clearly the testers and game beta testers that you hire don't do anything. They just turn a blind and die to everything and don't even fucking do their job. Oh my god, it's happening again. I'm trying to simulate and this fucking <laughs> what? What the hell? It's literally just the advance button that's glitched. You press advance and that pops up. What? Oh my god, it gets deeper. The plot thickens. Fire! 
What is this lighting, bro? Do they know anything about lighting cutscenes properly? Don't you guys just love the lighting in this game? Like, I can definitely see what is going on here. The shadows are on point. Like, this is the most visually stunning game. The shadows are completely bearable. They don't hurt your eyes. A very viewable game we've got going on right here. Oh, and the lighting gets even better. Like, Old Trafford are playing there during the day. Good luck. The sun better not be out. Otherwise, your chance of seeing what's going on on the left side at the Stratford end is zero to none oh my god look at the crowd as well look how is this happening in 2024 what visual fidelity and quality have we got running right here i swear this was a glitch in fifa 19 all the old glitches from previous games they, they somehow work their way back into the code they sneak under the cracks you end up getting this stuff it's just you can't kill these glitches man especially the visual ones they'll, they'll never go away i mean what what is going on anymore with with this game like, like uh, can someone explain to me what <laughs> Brother, uh. Why is it every every time I load up career mode and record a video, I experience a new glitch? I don't try and search for them. They come to me. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. Clearly, I'm doing something wrong. It's just so annoying. I can't do anything about it. You can't. You can't do anything. You can't back out. You can't click anything. A game-ending crash. And I've been wanting to speak on this for ages, but team of the year, that whole period just completely broke the game. It was like they flicked the switch and the game just couldn't handle team of the year being released and it just capitulated in on itself. I was on holiday, but I was seeing some of the randomest gameplay glitches. Like, like what is going on in this video? It is just, <laughs> Joao Pedro and Modric doing T poses in the middle of the field, having spasms, like jerking out. And it is just wild. There is no words for these videos and they only get crazier. Players just wiling out, the game going at zero miles an hour and just all these visual glitches happening on the pitch. Again, you have to see it to believe it. It's like the tide, news tile cutscenes came to life. I will preface that this only appeared in Ultimate Team, but there is no way in hell that this stuff can't creep into the offline modes and career mode. Like, watch out, it will. One day, it will pop up again. When EA release another update, something will trigger it. The game code is gonna malfunction and we'll have this kind of stuff popping up in career mode like it's only a matter of time team of the year just just broke everything the main menu ultimate team the gameplay and again with these horror cost like this is scarier than a horror movie it actually reminds me of fifa 12 if any if anyone remembers the fifa 12 gibberal cse qpr practice arena glitch that's what it's given me the vibes of only the real ones will remember if they can't get this right what, what makes you think they're gonna fix career mode what makes you think they're gonna get career mode right in fc 25 or beyond it's like you logged into the game and, and every day Hey, there, was, there was a new glitch that you encountered. Someone again. Yeah, is this a Halloween promo? Sam Kerr back at it again. What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Look at Sam Kerr. My kids play this. That's what I mean. I'm not even. Look! <laughs> Ooh. I've just gone <laughs> onto the game, right? It creeps what you out, though. I know these are some old glitches, but we, we've got to recap the months that were. You can't let them get away with this stuff. Like, penalty goals just spazzing out. The, the ball going at zero kilometers an hour. It is unexcusable. Like... I know this only happened for maybe a couple of days, but this is what happens when there is only like Pez as competition and that game just obviously turned into a mobile game hellhole. This is what happens when you're too complacent. You've got no competition, no one innovating. It is just the game gets released in this state. Again, it was ultimate team only, but this exists in the game. This, this could creep its way into everything else. Don't think it's all fixed for now. Who knows when this could get reactivated again? Can you even explain this? Like imagine explaining this to someone 10 years ago in like FIFA 14, FIFA 15. We're 10 years into the future and we've got even worse glitches than you had back then. You thought the impact engine was bad in FIFA 12. Well, this is the goal impact engine. Two players taking a penalty at once. Like, it's a clown show. It is a full-on clown show at the moment. And to make matters even worse, what's recently been discovered is that there is still some of the old FIFA 23 or the old school in-game menu deep within the game. We've got an ultimate team squad battles game going on. Someone's player gets injured and then, yeah, the old FIFA 23. 23 menu pops up it is still down there buried in the code and it begs the question how much has changed between fifa 23 and fc 24 clearly not much and even the things that have changed can sometimes revert back to the old i covered this in the last video too like the ultimate team pop-ups and promo that happens while she connected to the servers playing any other game mode it just 
flashes you and you can't do anything for like 30 seconds. You have to watch and force feed the ad down your throat. And I know I kind of like disregard player career mode, but it's sad to see that one of the only features they added into the mode this year was your player agents and, and them leading you to other clubs, getting your contracts. And this guy on Reddit goes, he's a 93 rated striker, top goal scorer in the Premier League and earning over 100 grand a week. So naturally, my agent is recommending a move to Punjab FC, one of the worst teams in the world, in the game, half a star. What is the point of the player manager if they're just gonna like it's just another new feature that doesn't work as intended and will never get fixed out of everyone it's the player career mode fans that i feel for the most because they have been in the trenches they've been eating shit for years and if you still don't believe me about how everyone's kind of complaining this year it's probably the most i've ever seen people just calling out ea actually speaking up against the game and their decisions in ultimate team career mode everyone has already had enough the game has already died and we're not even in march and I'm sure over the new year in January, you guys would have loved the, the football feast that was going on. We had both AFCON and Asian Cup at the exact same time. Clubs had players missing on international duty. The January transfer market it kept football fans entertained every day. Clubs were missing players out on international duty. It was a challenge for a lot of club teams to compete. These two competitions just aren't in the game. They're, they're just not in tournament mode, not in career mode. AFCON's actually just never been in FIFA in general. Like, I don't know who that license belongs to. To the Asian Cup is actually in eFootball, but we all know what their current game is like and what they're doing with the, with the Asian Cup. It's actually not even in career mode or anything. Like It's only ever the Euros and the International Men's Cup. Forget about Copa America. That has been removed completely. The Copa America just doesn't exist in career. So three of the biggest international tournaments in the world just don't happen in, in FC24. Not even in its unlicensed state is it in the game. And uh, with the Euro DLC, like I've predicted many times on this channel, it is going to be pretty much copy and paste of what the World Cup 2022 DLC was and, and that was just a major disappointment. This is probably going to be another disappointment. There's already mods out for this Euro 2024 tournament mode kind of thing so let me know down in the comments below if you guys want me to do a video on that playing the Euro 2024 mode early. Otherwise it's going to be the same old same old and I'll be very surprised if they implement anything new or actually have a fully fleshed out mode like 2014. This is the first time they've got the Euro license back so are they going to do anything innovative with it? Probably not. It's just all going to funnel into Ultimate Team promos. And this is what I mean when I say some of these glitches won't be fixed until probably the end of the year or until FC25. Because guess how long it took them to fix one little simple visual glitch? The player bio bug that when you clicked on a player, when you viewed the opposition team, a Bournemouth badge came up for, for every single player. A silly little thing that I noticed in my first playthrough of the game on launch day, by the way. So to back in October, back in September. And it took them until title update 8. Yes, 8 title updates until it was finally addressed where the player bio screen could have displayed an incorrect badge. You cannot tell me that took them five, six months to fix. How is this not addressed in the first one to two months max? Like, I'm just used to it by now. I'm just out here sending the warning message. I'm out here being the messenger. And in title update nine, they've gone on to fix some things in player career. But most importantly, your youth players could have the chip shop play styles without meeting its requirements. What about goalkeepers having like six outfield player traits when they're never going to use them? Like goalkeepers having the finesse shot trait. They only fix like part of the problem. And there's only like one minuscule part of the entire issue. It's like, yeah, they had the chip shot play styles, but also I've seen goalkeepers with like three, four play styles that don't even suit a goalkeeper. How many problems have been fixed in nine title updates? That's a good question. I, I actually don't know that many. Like maybe random visual glitches, like the wild the face one. Other than that, like the majority of the time being either ultimate team stuff or gameplay. Like the gameplay has been so bad and inconsistent and something's been broken every single time every single update that they've never really touched career mode that much besides like random little tweaks here and there they've had to spend so much time like improving the gameplay because it's been so poor it's like we were the beta testers and and they never even tested the game out before release but who could forget title update 7 where there was no career mode changes or fixes whatsoever given they did add some star heads and some new face scans but in terms of career mode fixes it was not even listed it was like nah career mode's perfect right now there is no need to fix anything.
I'm so glad I waited to drop this video because over the course of the next couple weeks there have been even more EA failures, incompetency, updates that don't even barely mention career mode, some questionable squad updates and some new glitches we gotta dive into. Let's just start off with the FC24 Spring Update, Title Update 11 with new animations captured from this season's Champions League, playstyles, gameplay refresh and 80 updated face scans. So I'm expecting something big. There's no mention of Kenilworth Road, which is a red flag. We're about eight months into the game cycle and the Luton Stadium still hasn't been added to the game. When you go scroll down to the tabs here, we've got gameplay and then ultimate team and more. Brother, uh, what's that? You can't write it. The only time career mode is mentioned is for the CPU AI changes where they've adjusted legendary difficulty AI behavior and the CPU more likely to perform shot types based on their respective play styles. Plays with lower composure, more likely to make mistakes when pressed. Career mode was mentioned. Let, let, let's just read the fine print here. We look forward to seeing player feedback on legendary CPU AI changes across career mode. Oh, we get a mention. We get a look in. I feel blessed. I feel honored to be mentioned once throughout this whole entire article. I don't know why it took this long to, to add new shooting animations, new skill moves. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, nah. That's a game changer, boys. That That's a game changer. You've got step overs. Reinventing the wheel here, guys. Oh, okay. This I do like. Low key, I'm not going to make a joke of this, but it's the Nicholas Sula goal line clearance last inch effort, which as a defender myself, I can appreciate. So that, that is quite cool. The other two, yeah, they, they barely even do anything. They're just filler. We've got a couple new head scans, face scans, which should have been added into the game months ago, but like new summer, summer signings, like Hoyland, Mitoma, who was actually their last season. Season. Doku who was there last season as well. Van de Ven. Look at this bloody Muppet. Really appreciate the adjustment to CPU. Hey, what about the, all the 5,000 other things wrong with career mode, brother? If you gave me a list of things to fix about the game, or career mode in general, fixing Legendary AI would be about number 999 on the list. Like, they've just got their priorities all mixed up. Yet again, EA have gone without even barely touching career mode, barely fixing any of the glitches and bugs mentioned in this thread. The new styles will just forever be bugged and glitched and never work as intended. I'll put my hands up and say I'll give EA one thing. They did fix the Premier League scoreboard. So instead of just seeing Spurs, they've actually added a bit of a drop shadow there. I, I see the vision. I, I know it's taken about three months since the newly added scoreboard, but they eventually got around to it, guys. I know it must have been a strenuous task. They, they got the fix and... Good on you guys. And just to rub a little bit of salt into the wounds, we have the updated Premier League graphic overlays. Of course, the pre-match lineups that roll out before the game, but it's only available, here's the catch, on old gen. PS4, Xbox One, they're having a field day with this. Actual lineups, like how the team line up on match day, if you're actually watching it on TV. This is, for some reason, removed from next gen. It's been an issue ever since launch. And uh, EA have heard our feedback, heard that we want it back into the game, but still have done nothing about it. So I'm just showing you guys, because. I don't have old gen. I stopped playing old gen years ago. But this is what it would look like. You get the full TV broadcast package presentation. It actually looks kind of sick, to be honest. Like, I miss this. Like, watching the teams get announced, watching them all line up in front of the camera. And you can get a nice visual on not only your team, but the opposition. It just makes you feel like you're watching a game on TV. So the old gen boys are laughing right now. And we're just stuck with the 20 second cutscenes before the game. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Over the course of the last week or so, we had a couple of squad updates, which were much needed. Unfortunately, um, for a day or two, EA kind of fumbled the bag and messed up here. Slipped these two players in. We had two fake players added into the career mode player database. We've got fake player one, who's playing for Shenzhen Football Club, which is actually uh, Coleman, the ex-Everton player. Seamus, for some reason, is one of these fake players. And then the other guy is a 29-year-old goalkeeper with no face, no, no 2D photo. I don't know how this slips through the cracks, but someone pressed the wrong button. And, and we had this for a while. Not only were the fake players added in, we had, get this, a 15-year-old wonder kid added into the game when, what, a 16-year-old Lamina Mal still isn't added into FIFA. We had the Wolverhampton Wanderers wonder kid, Wesley Okadua. 15. Mate, if you started an MLS saver, I'd, he'd be 14. Once you start a new save, like, 
what? This was an accident. This was a mistake because they ended up removing him like a day later. Now, just to go over him, he's a right back, 15, English, 5 foot 9, 2 star skills, 3 star weak foot. He was barely in the game for 24 hours, but it, it was his 24 hours of fame. I don't think they quite got his face scan right. Nah, the resemblance is uncanny, actually. Looking like a pasty white man from down the pub. And not only that, he was actually a good viable option in the game. Starts off at 59 overall with 87 potential. Already an exciting prospect. At 15, he could have been your right back for the entire save. Like, you, you'd go to the end of the career mode and it'd be 30. Uh, I'm keen to see him added back in. Those were his attributes, if you were wondering. Probably should be added into next year's game, slipping through the cracks. This guy was born in 2008. Oh my god, I actually remember 2008. I feel old, brother. And it wouldn't be more FC24 title updates if we didn't get more new visual glitches in our game mode. Then we've got a transfer signing announcement happening in a game. Transferred from Leverkusen, Ibrahim Akanate moving to Spurs. Kind of like the Wesley situation. He's got an impersonator roaming around. The bold man from Newcastle. I actually didn't even clock that. He's got a Newcastle kit on too. There's always something lurking in this game and apparently there's a new play styles glitch uh let me know if you guys have tried this out but apparently you can basically max out whatever play you want with every single play style in the game it's a little bit of a grind because you actually have to complete the pre-match training in the game like you can't just simulate it so it takes it requires a little bit of skill all you have to do is release a play you don't need and uh yeah you can get unlimited play styles you guys should take advantage of it before they patch it out and any advantages any glitches that help us that the ea will make sure they get rid of it straight away so you probably have a limited time to try this but it's there now there has been a glimmer of hope this week as some rumors have emerged that 2k might be acquiring the fifa license next johnny infantino is looking for a new company to make a fifa games we might have some competition for ea some proper competition mike straw here on twitter announcing that he's hearing rumors fifa and 2k are working to announce a partnership for 2k to make an official licensed fifa game that's exactly the words that i wanted to hear yeah that just had everyone dreaming everyone thinking that a brand Brand new title, but well, finally FIFA will be returning, but just with different developers, different producers, and we finally get to have a new take on the FIFA game mode, as it's the creators of the famous NBA 2K series, and you know they're, they're not perfect either. I mean, EA and 2K, they're as bad as each other, but this time we have a brand new company making it, brand new ideas, brand new innovation, hopefully, and a FIFA 2K series. I don't know, that that kind of sounds hard to me. I'm willing to give it a go after all these years of letting EA fumble the bag. I am more than happy to give it to an another company and see what they can cook up what, what can possibly go wrong look i've heard some bad things i've heard some good things about 2k there just needs to be not just an online experience there also needs to be an offline career experience too so hopefully it's just not online only that's my only fear and then you know their track record with servers aren't that great these are the kind of ideas that you can cook up so you know sponsorships shoe deals hopefully they can work with a lot more brands to incorporate into the game modes and just have a lot more my career and my pro options we could see stuff like the nba park makers way or have its own take with the soccer genre this is exactly what it feels like we're, we're about to be saved by the 2k gods we are finally let off the shackles of ea and uh hopefully 2k can show us what they got we're maintaining the faith and like this is like from three years ago a feature suggestion a community creations which is in the nba 2k series but it's just where people from the community can update like or just upload rosters teams kits badges like just everything under the sun everyone can access them as long as you're connected to the servers so i think it's pretty cool that you know things like this could be on the horizon and could that make their way into a brand new fifa game another thing that 2k get criticized on a lot is they're you know similar to ea they, they love a few microtransactions they love making the game pay to win pay to play look i just hope that is not the case i hope there's just another mode that is not online this could be the play right here fifa 2k 26 sort of 2026 world cup in america canada mexico anything could happen according to chew boy it's possible like who, who else big enough w would be able to take on the FIFA license in all its glory but the only bad thing is that they're not going to have any like of the club licenses or like you know the Premier League, Serie A, all that kind of stuff. It's either going to be all the fake teams or they're just going to focus purely on like the my player experience or really flesh out a park open world kind of mode and my player experience. It's got me hyped. I'm looking forward to the future and just EA having to step their game up because more competition is on the horizon. I don't think this will see the return of the fully fledged standalone World Cup games though. It's probably just going to be embedded into the the FIFA 2K26 experience, just like another little side piece of content. I am just going to remain slightly optimistic for now. 
And the final little piece, little note that I wanted to end on it was this tweet I saw right here. I was just scrolling, having, having a nice little morning to myself. And this came across my timeline. It's from Career Mode Insider. And he said, although we're constantly in denial, the future of offline football gaming is at a crossroads. Soon, Career Mode and Master League may be completely removed altogether from EA Sports FC and eFootball. I'm sorry to tell you, brother. But one's already dead. I posted this on my community tab just to get, get a gauge and see what you guys were saying about the whole situation. Situation. If 2K and FIFA do make that game, I'm switching there as long as there is career mode. Uh, for facts, that's what I'll be doing. Uh, they're not going to remove career mode because there's still loads of people who play career mode. Look, I wouldn't put it past them. I've got Jack Wang in saying the issue with EA isn't really the resources or effort they put into career mode. It's that they don't listen to the community and waste time putting in crap like the transfer analysis and player personality instead of an in-game editor, starting a save mid-season from real life standings or just more customization. And I 100% agree. I don't know guys, this is just my my thoughts and opinions on the whole situation let me know down in the comments below or am i just rambling too much am i complaining am i just looking for for nitpicks and should i just be more appreciative of career mode and all the work that ea do whatever your thoughts are let me know down below let's discuss that has been the current state of fc24 career mode and beyond a wrap up of the last couple of months and let me know you guys still playing it are you kind of just given up with it and not really entertained by it and anymore move to other games let me know down in the comments below do you want to see more new bugs and glitches when they come out over the course of the next few months because you know i promise this was my last rant video but if ea make any more big mistakes i'm gonna have to you know, document them for for evidence sake just because i'm infuriated with the base game of fc i am going to just focus on you know new mods coming to the scene the realism mod showcasing that to you all and just the power of the pc experience as always i've been your boy sir bchd make sure to drop the video a like on your way out if you made it this far subscribe Turn on the notifications for the channel so you never miss out. And as always, I'll catch you all in the very next video. Bye-bye.